the idea of this video is that we can get data from your YouTube channel whenever you post a video, then download captions of that video as well, and then upload those captions in a Google Doc in a specified drive folder, as well as keep track of the video data in a spreadsheet like this with the title, the summary of that video, that is the description, the content, that is the captions that I'm going to show you later, publish date, URL, the date scraped, this is uh, a data that I use, and then the thumbnail as well. And the reason why this might be interesting is because, for example, once you extract this data automatically from YouTube, you then can store it in a spreadsheet or in a CSV file that you can download or in Google Docs or Word Docs or PDFs that you can download later to then potentially feed this content into your own AI agent or chatbot, for example, that you could embed on your website. And then using this content from YouTube that is yours, people could interact with this bot and that bot would retrieve knowledge from your own content. So this can be done with YouTube, which is what we are focusing on on this video. But it could also be done, for example, scraping your website, for example, in doing this with my blog posts on the website as well. And once we get this data out of the platforms where you store these videos and content and into your own files, we can then manipulate that data properly and feed that data into the AI vector database or any database to then retrieve that data to chat with the AI bot. So that's an example use case. And in this video, we are focusing on that extraction part. So how can we extract videos from YouTube specifically that also get captions and then store that data in a dedicated spreadsheet as well as docs. And we are looking at this by using make.com and they recently released a native YouTube module and this is the videos API from YouTube. There's only a few modules available natively. You can watch videos in a channel, could be your channel or any other channel. You can watch videos by search. This can be useful to essentially add a query as if you were searching on the YouTube app and then the YouTube API would return all the results of that query and you can then save them somewhere and run any data processing workflows that you like. You can also watch videos in a specific playlist when you add the playlist that you want to watch and then whenever there's a new video there, the API and the make module would output data and you can also upload a video this can be useful for example if you have an internal contact management system in notion for example which is something i mentioned in the past in one of the videos that i recorded and then you want to push that content automatically into youtube without having to manually do it at time then that's the end point that you want to use for this use case we are looking at the watch videos in a channel module because the idea is to retrieve new videos whenever i post them in my channel and you can see this module is running every week just once a week i don't need to run more frequently because then every week when it runs it will retrieve the new videos it would then list the captions so that's an endpoint from the youtube api that is not supported natively within the make module but it is still available so we can still do an http request to the youtube api to retrieve that data so i want to get the captions then we're going to download the captions to essentially extract it as a file and then we will upload that file to google drive and we also store the content data in google sheet so that the end result that i have is this sheet with all the videos the description, the content, that is a URL to the Google Doc that is automatically created and that contains the captions of that video. Because then I can use this written content to feed any large language model to then query that knowledge when a user or I am chatting with it. So that's one use case, for example. Now let's get into the details of the make scenario and how I built this. First, there is watch videos in channel. So that's the module that I already mentioned. And here I established a connection by clicking on add the first time and then following the prompts on the screen. In the channel ID, you can insert any channel. You can also find the ID, but in this case, I'm interested in my channel. So you can insert me here as explained in this help. And you can also define published before and published after. So if you want to only get videos published before today, for example, then that's what you want to set or published after you can set this date and the request would only return videos published after that specific date. And here I set a limit of five. That is how many videos do you want the API to return when you run it or when it runs automatically? So if you want to set a maximum limit, maybe to reduce operations consumption or because you don't want to run too many data at once because you might run into timeout errors or reach the quota limits of the API, then you set this limit. In my case, every week, I'm only going to post one or two videos max, so I don't need more than five. And the first time that I set up this automation, I ran all of the content, also the past content, to make sure that I added it to the sheet in both. And then once all of the content was added to the sheet, the automation would then pick up only the new videos. To add all the content, the past content to the sheet, I 
right clicked on it and then selected choose where to start and selected all. Then I also increased the limit in here to make sure that I would process many of them at once. And then I would run the automation manually to add all the past data to the sheet. Once that is done, I then set the frequency, activated it, and now it will run by itself. The second step of the automation is whenever there is a video posted, so this would run each Sunday, I would then use the YouTube API to get captions here with the parameters part ID, because I'm going to use the ID, and then video ID, I pass the video ID from the previous module. So whenever this returns a new video, one of the parameters in the response is video ID. And because I want to get the captions of a specific video, I'm going to pass this parameter right here in the video ID query string parameter. And that's it. We don't need any body because that's just a get request to query data. And we want to parse the response yes so that it looks in the correct JSON format. One um, potential handle that you might find in this module is setting the authentication because this is not the YouTube module. It is the make an auth 2.0 request module that you can find under the HTTP module in make. One of the options is make an auth 2.0 request. And when you click on this on the first time, you will need to set the authentication. And to do this, you will need a project in the Google Developers Console. So you can see here, for example, on console.cloud.google.com, you can create projects in here from new project and then go through all the steps required, in particular under auth consent screen to add the redirect URLs and all the scopes needed under enabled APIs and services for your app. And after that is done, you can connect your app, your Google console project to the make HTTP module. There is a detailed guide from the make documentation on how to do this step by step. So I will leave a link to this in the description of the video. Now, once we get the captions for the video, I then added a filter to ensure that captions actually exist because I found that for some very old video, for example, there was no caption. And if there is no caption, then I don't want the automation to continue really because I don't want it to download captions if it is empty because that would output an error message from the YouTube API. So in here, if there is a caption, I will then use again the same module, make a note 2.0 request with the same authentication. Once I've done it here, now I don't need to do it again. I can just select it from the drop down menu here. And this as well will be a GET request. This is the base URL of the YouTube API that I'm using. And the endpoint is captions slash. And then I'm going to map the ID of the captions that I want to download from the previous module. So from the previous module, there is the items array. And within the items array, there is ID as one of the parameters. So that's what I map. And here I'm mapping it manually directly because I just want the first item in the array. Sometimes a video might have multiple captions and that is why the items is an array here because it might contain multiple captions. In my case, I only have one caption for now, that is the English captions. And that is why I just set the first ID. Otherwise, there will need to be a bit of data manipulation to do. Here's where we pass the response. Once you download that file, we upload it to Drive. So in here, this is the Google Drive module, upload a file. I have my connection and then select the folder where I want to store the file. And I'm going to map the file from the previous module, that is download captions. I'm going to name it captions underscore title. Title is mapped from the first module here, that is a text value. And then in data, I map the data from module number four, that is the one that downloads the caption. Then I will convert a file and I will convert it to Google Apps document, that is a Google Docs. And once this is done, I will then add the content to the sheet, that is this one here, where here as well, I will map all the values for each column. So there is the video ID, which is mapped from the first module, the title, summary, the content, that is the web view link from the Google Docs upload module, the publish date, the URL, which I construct automatically because it is not automatically given by the API, but we can construct it based on the ID. So we can use u2.b slash video ID to construct a valid URL for that video. Then I keep track of the scraped date, that is when this video was added to the sheet, the page, YouTube, and I use this just as a way to filter in my sheet for different content because I'm also having an automation that scrapes data from my website and adds it to the sheet and then I use tabs to filter based on the source. If it is YouTube here, I use a filter function in Google Sheet 
to retrieve only the content that contains YouTube here. Whereas on the other tabs, I will use fitness, business, life based on the category on the website. And finally, there's also the thumbnail image that is a URL and there are different resolutions. As you can see here, thumbnails is a collection and it contains multiple resolutions here. I use the MaxRes URL to store it in my sheet. Now, if we look at this, this is my master tab where all the content is added every week. And right now, if I am to add run this once, I recently posted a video, so this will continue here. As you can see, gets the captions, downloads the captions, adds them to Google Doc, and then adds the content to the sheet. So if I go here, now there is a new row here with the ID of the video, the title, publish date. Here there is also the summary, which I hid just to keep things cleaner. And you can see here that's the description. The URL, which can also be replaced by a chip, script date, page, and the thumbnail image here as a JPEG. And this concludes this use case for an automation using the YouTube API to retrieve data and store it in your own documents to then use them autonomously as needed. And one possible use case is, for example, to feed these documents and this content to an AI agent or a vector database to then retrieve that content dynamically whenever you are chatting with the agent or a user is chatting with it. That's it for now. If you have questions or comments on what you would like to see next or what you think this video is missing, you can leave them down below. For now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.